this uh, first lure. Try out with the black and red because the color of the water is beautiful, purple. Let's try that out. Very important to have a nice tight drag. Everything set just right. Too loose of a drag won't hook the fish. Too tight of a drag usually, once they get way out, ends up ripping the hook out of her mouth. So you try to get it set at, I like the 18 to 20 pound range. Whether it's the wire, which is old school, or the monofilament, which is also old school nowadays. Um, we're going to set out another side there. You try to have a good count. The whole idea is to get all your lures set up so it looks like a school. You got two underneath, two on top. And if you got six rods, you fish another two there around top. So it's like a kind of a diamond shaped pattern. Try out. Today we're going to start with three, just test out a new boat, so we'll see what we can do. You guys probably aren't used to seeing the old school star drags. Nowadays you're looking at the lever drags, but for wire line, these reels are the best because they hold up to the corrosion and they're just well, low gear ratio, have to be able to crank them in a lot better too. Try and get them set up now where you have to school back there in just the right pattern so if you get a strike you're able to get maybe a double or triple out of it um, at the moment like i said it's a new boat for me so i'm adjusting to the you know you want the clarity of the water you got a lot of wake back there and uh, white wash so you want to be able to adjust for it where need be to get the bites all right we're starting now we got here at about i guess 11 o'clock not sure what time it is right now but the outgoing tide just started not too long ago so we're going to try out in front of Fimini and work our way towards the cat because uh, this time of year, a lot of times the bait will get pushed up onto uh, the cat area or bimini right out front. So we'll fish the outgoing tide this afternoon, check this area out. And we have a small front coming tomorrow, so if we don't do well here, generally when you get the wind out of the northwest to north, Isaacs is better because it pushes the bait up onto the edge. And then it also will be a late time or late morning bite as well tomorrow. So hopefully it will work out in our favor in both sections and we'll be a hero today. Uh, when you're waiting for a wahoo bite, obviously you can see how fast we're going. You're going to just sit here and be in a daze, and all of a sudden you're going to hear the reel screaming. Because we're going so fast that when they latch on, it's going to set the hook right away and start screaming. The first thing you want to do is, depending on how good of a boat driver you have, you can either speed up the boat, because generally they'll help you get other strikes as well, or you can have whoever's fishing you run over and start cranking on the opposite rod that's not has a fish on it and just work the rods because sometimes you just keep going for a little longer you'll get that second third even sometimes a fourth fish i mean the most i've ever had on it once myself was six and that's just working everything together that's the whole idea you get everything zipping through the edge there and it produces fish and doubles and triples are not uncommon once the fish is on generally these fish like to run straight out and depending on which way you turn they're going to turn the opposite way to head offshore or inshore depending on which way you're turning when they're doing that, you want to stay on that rod really good, keeping it tight at all times. Because if you don't, sometimes they'll turn around and start racing towards the boat, and you can still shake that hook out, even though at this speed, you would think the hook is set perfectly. And the only time is if it gets hooked in that bone and their roof is when they won't come off. But if they get hooked in the sides, you know as well as I do, they shake their heads enough, make that hole bigger, hook slides right on out. So you want to keep it tight at all times. If, it, if you can crank faster, crank faster. If you can't, just take your time. And that's why some of these low gear ratio reels are perfect because you can only go one speed anyways. And it's just generally perfect. I like to start out marking a line where I'm at. So when you start getting bites, you can let it out to the exact same spot at all times. Because once you figure out the spot that the rods need to be, it's very, very important that they go back in the same spot. Even if you're off by four or five feet, it makes a big difference when you're trying to generate a school back there bites. Uh, every once in a while you want to make sure that the lures are clean. You know, whether there's weed around, plastic bags, anything that's floating, and sometimes they'll snag on the stuff and create drag. So what I generally do is like on your rigger baits, you wind them up. This, most of the time you can see them pop and see if there's weed on them, but for the, the lead ones, you can actually feel the difference in weight by pulling on it. Really good at it. You fish a lot. You can feel a difference in weight. If it's heavier, obviously it's got weight on it. If it's about the same, it's about it's okay. So that saves on time bringing it out. And uh, if you're doing that, a lot of times, as you know as well, I do you catch fish when baits in the water. Keep going. 
Adorama TV presents Getting the Shot with Corey Rich. Hi, I'm Corey Rich and you're watching Adorama TV. Adorama is the place where I buy all of my still photography and video equipment, both for leisure needs and also professional needs. Today we're going to talk about shooting a split level fishing photograph. We're at a beautiful lake in the Sierra Nevada mountains just outside of my home in Lake Tahoe and I'm working with Amy McCormick who's a fish whisperer as she claims at least. I'm using an Aquatech D4 housing. It's the new Delphin D4 housing and what I like about this housing actually is that it allows me to decide which lens I'm using and change out the ports. So I'm actually shooting on the Nikon D4S. This was designed for the D4, but the beauty of the D4S is all of the buttons are the same. Um, I'm shooting with the 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. It's the F4 Nikkor lens. And the beauty of, of putting the 16 to 35 in is that with the zoom control of this housing, I can actually decide whether I'm at 35, 16, or anywhere in between. In general, when I'm shooting in the water, I want to be fairly wide. The reason is the water magnifies, so 25% magnification when the camera is underwater. So 16 millimeters quickly becomes a fairly long lens. The goal in this situation is really simple. I want to show that Amy is actually in the water. When shooting with a, when a, with a dome port, you want to make sure that the water is actually shedding evenly off of the lens. One of the tricks that I've learned over time is that if you spit on the lens, much like a scuba mask, rub it in, and I know that sounds kind of gross, but it actually works. Then you put the camera in the water, and when the water starts to shed, it sheds more evenly. Because of course, if you have water debris on the lens, you get an out of focus photograph. Every time I use the water housing, I pull it out of the Pelican case, and I first clean all of the seals. I make sure that there's no hair or dust on any of the O-rings. And then I use a lubricant that I buy from Aquatech, actually, and I lube the O-rings. And what that does is allow for a perfect seal so that no water is coming into the camera. When we approached this lake, I thought the obvious picture would be to put the camera very close to the vegetation on the left side of the bank, put something in the foreground in the frame. I made for a pretty nice photograph. I kind of allowed the reeds to frame Amy as she's casting. I found that as the clouds built and I moved a little deeper into the lake, with at 16 millimeters, I could actually really leverage the clouds in the background, that lower horizon line, which is the trees in the background, and really focus on making a more dynamic image of Amy. Shooting with the water housing takes a lot of repetition. There's a lot of variables. In this case, I chose to literally go knee deep or just slightly deeper and put the water housing in. I know I'm shooting so wide that I'm actually not even looking at the camera. I'm kind of orienting the camera, asking Amy to start casting, and then as I'm shooting the picture, I pull the water housing out and I review the images. The beauty of this housing is I can actually review the images, toggle forward and backward, and actually zoom in and check focus. As soon as I see something that I like, then I ask Amy to just repeat that action and I just continue to shoot so that hopefully in that series of images, there's one frame that really it all comes together. This is my favorite photograph from the shoot. It really epitomizes what a split level photograph is all about. We can see into the water, albeit it's pretty murky water. But in the background, you actually see our subject, Amy. She's doing a nice cast. We're seeing reflection of Amy in the water in the foreground, beautiful puffy clouds in the sky, and a nice clean horizon line, which is the pine trees behind Amy. And that's the best feeling in the world when I can share the images with the person I'm photographing and they're delighted and happy to see what we've accomplished. Be sure to check out Adorama's next contest. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can win.
I'm Corey Rich and you're watching Adorama TV. There's tons of content just like this published on a regular basis for free, which is the coolest part. So be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel, check us out on social media, and we'll see you soon. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.